All right, so we were planning on showing you guys a tuning video on this 390. Then we backed up from this 390 to another 390. And now I'm gonna make you wait till after the ad to find out exactly why I am not tuning this particular 390. <laughs> Restoration of a classic Ford is a journey of discovery. Let Auto Crafters help you with yours. We offer quality parts for Falcon, Fairlane, F-Series, Galaxy, Maverick, and Pinto. Contact us today. So why am I not going to try to tune this 390? I have bought plug wires. I have bought another set of points. I put brand new plugs in it. And I never felt comfortable. All the time I was doing all that, I was thinking to myself, I don't like the way this feels. And what I mean by that is there was something bugging me in the back of my mind. And I'll usually stop at that point and try to figure out what it is. So I came back out here the other day, pulled the valve cover off like I've got it right now. And I did this. This battery is now pretty much dead. And when I did that, I noticed that the exhaust push rod on number two is not rotating and you go well that's not a big deal and on these kind of engines yes it is on a flat tappet engine the push rod and lifter should be rotating on the cam so you should see rotation from all push rods on a v8 if you do not that means that that lifter is dragging across the top of the cam it could mean that that particular lobe on the cam is damaged and has started to wreck the uh, lifter as well the more you try to run it, the worse it's going to get. And this engine is a fairly complete 1966 390 GT out of a Fairlane. Now what I'm going to talk about is how I know that, other than the fact that I am not going to try to tune something that has an issue in the valve train. All right, so we know what we have. We know we have a big block 390. We are pretty sure that with the matched components of intake, cylinder head and block that we have a big block 394 barrel but what was this engine in and we don't really have a definitive way of knowing that but the fact that our c8 ael heads have a, a bore through the flange here down on this hump tells us that we probably have a 390 out of a 1966 fairlane probably a gt we won't ever really know that, know that, because we don't have any other tags or information on here. If we got really lucky, there might be a stamping on the back of the block that could tell us what this one was in, but it's only going to give us a serial number. We probably won't ever know. All we do know is that we have a big block GT engine, and I don't want to sacrifice that to a tuning video while wrecking a lobe on the cam. Here's the thing I'll say about that. I am never going to wreck something in search of a video because these 390s are hard to come by and they're an expensive engine to rebuild. Um, this particular engine will probably see some parts from Survival Motorsport. We're going to be talking to Barry Robotnik over the next few days about the other 390 that we have. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that right now. Now originally we planned on tuning this. We thought we would do it. When I found the push rod issue, I got nervous and Andrew and I went and filmed a video on the tuning procedure on a big block 390 in the F100. Again, this isn't necessarily tuning. This is what happens when you start tuning and you find a problem. That one also cratered in a way, and you can watch a video that we're going to be putting up on Thursday for Auto Resto Mod about what happened and what that's going to mean for the truck engine because the truck engine is now completely dead. It too is a big block 390 GT. So what we're going to be doing in the next couple weeks is we're going to be coming back and doing a tuning video on the 289 that's in the four-door Galaxy because I do want to sell that engine, but I want to show it to run. In other words, I want people to see it. And the best way to do that is to get the engine running correctly, tune it up, and get it ready to go down the road to somebody who needs a five-bolt 289 to put in their Fairlane Galaxy or whatever. So that's basically all we're doing right now. I wanted to give you guys an update. I know this isn't much of a video, but it does kind of let you know where we're at with this big block 390. I am probably just going to go ahead and pull this engine out of here eventually after we get the 390 and the truck worked on um, and rebuild this thing to be a really badass uh, big block 390. Maybe even more than that. We may go with a stroker kit. I don't know. 
It's going to let sleeping dogs lie. But what I'm not going to let lie is the fact that we have patrons that support us. The list going over here beside me, these are the guys who put their money where their mouth is and they support the channel on a monthly basis. Uh, we appreciate all of our patrons. You guys are awesome. We're glad you're here. Uh, these guys are helping to support the kids that come in here on summertime weekdays and Andrew who is now a part-time employee here at the studios. So you're not seeing any of that money come to me. It's actually being spread out around the world. Well, not the world, but at least in your local neighborhood here in North Augusta for people to uh, be able to learn what we do and how we do it. So another thing that I'd like for you to do is subscribe to the channel. You're going to see, um, you know, us getting to 100,000 subscribers here pretty soon. I'd love to have that sooner than later. Uh, we want to put that plaque on the Paul's wall inside the Paul's wall. So we're looking for you to do that as well. Um, finally and all folks, be kind to each other, love each other, treat each other nice. You guys have a great week and we'll see you next time on down the road. I am really sad about this. I'm sadder about the truck and you'll see that if you watch the show on Thursday. Cam and I got together and we worked on the engine in the truck and we discovered what the problem was. And the cool thing for you guys is you're going to see what the problem is and you'll get to see us rebuilding a big block 390 on the cheap. We're going to try to do it as cheaply as we possibly can because I need to get this truck back on the road and I don't want to wait on a lot of parts. We're even going to go back with the iron manifold because even used big block manifolds are running like $350, $400, $500 for a used manifold. And I'm not paying that because I got a four barrel manifold already. Doesn't bother me. So we're going to be doing that. Pretty excited about the builds coming up, especially this one. This one will have to wait a little while because we got to recoup the money and get it built back up. So there you go. Later.